Good afternoon. Welcome to Connection Chat, where every day we look at a portion of that day's Bible reading from the threaded Bible reading plan for the day. Today we read 1 Kings chapters 5 through 7, which continues the story of King Solomon. After I read the, the chapters this morning, I found myself just kind of overwhelmed and swamped by some details in, in the chapters and kind of walked away going, what in the world? If you've not had a chance to read the text, please press pause and, and go back and read it and then come watch this video. If you have already read the chapters, then you can identify with what I experienced this morning. I don't always do this, but today I decided to read a commentary uh, to see what they had to say about the chapters. And the very first paragraph in my ESV expositors, uh, expository commentary says this, and I couldn't help but laugh after I read it. It says, if one is tempted to ask why First and Second Kings are not everyone's favorite books of the Bible, these chapters provide an answer. So far, the Solomon narrative has been relatively easy reading, even if picking up all of the nuances takes some care. Even the details of chapter four are sufficiently rooted in a narrative context to be negotiated relatively easily. And then we run into chapters five through seven. That just made me laugh because chapters five through seven was just a challenge to read. It had so many details. It just seemed overwhelming. It kind of walked away going, what is the point of all of these details? But I wanted us to look at a few of the verses and see how we can learn from Solomon and actually some of the mistakes that he makes in these chapters. In chapter six, it begins to describe how Solomon built the temple. It says at the beginning, it says in verse one, in the 480th year after the people of Israel came out of the land of Egypt, in the fourth year of Solomon's reign over Israel in the month of Ziv, which is the second month he began to build the house of the Lord. I want you to hear the size of it. Just kind of pay attention to the numbers. I know you may not know what a cubit is, but pay attention to the numbers. The house that King Solomon built for the Lord was 60 cubits long, 20 cubits wide, and 30 cubits high. So it was 60 by 20 by 30. I want us to contrast that with what it says in, in chapter 7 about his own palace. Chapter seven, verse one, beginning there, it says Solomon was, was building his own house 13 years and he finished his entire house. He built the house of, of the, the forest of, of Lebanon. Here's its dimensions. Its length was 100 cubits and its breadth 50 cubits and its height 30 cubits. When compared to his house, the temple is small. Uh, the temple, again, its measurements is 60 by 20 by 30. The palace was 100 by 50 by 30. And then when you look at the last verse of chapter 6, you see it took seven years to build the temple, whereas it took 13 years to build his palace. So if you were to walk through Jerusalem uh, during the time of Solomon, and you were to see the palace and the temple, there would be a noticeable difference between the extravagance of it and the size of it. And really, you would walk away knowing where Solomon's heart really was. The, the deal is this. He was focused more on his own power and prestige and strength and, and comfort than he was really honestly in worshiping God. I'm not making light of him. He had a lot of good things he did, and he also had some downfalls. But now I want to apply this to our lives. It's not so much about what is the size of your house. It's not so much what's the size of your church building. Rather, here it is. What are you focused more on? What am I focused more on? Am I focused on my own selfish desires and wants? Or am I focused on God and his will and his glory and his purposes? The only way that I can really focus on his will and his purposes instead of my own is by turning control of my life over to him and allowing him to transform and shape my heart in such a way that my heart is pursuing things of him instead of myself. So this morning, I want you, or this afternoon, I want you to think about who are you pursuing? Are you pursuing your own stuff or are you pursuing God and his glory? My prayer is that we would pursue him. Let me pray for us. Father, thank you. Thank you for being with us. Even when we read chapters of the Bible, that just seems so long and maybe even boring at times. Thank you for the opportunity to learn from them. Sometimes we learn the good things and sometimes we learn the things to avoid. Father, I pray that in our own lives, that we would seek after you, that we would allow you to transform our hearts so that we're pursuing you and your kingdom and not ourselves and our own kingdom. 
And it's for your name that I pray. Amen. Guys, I'm glad you joined us today. Keep reading. It'll be better than chapters five through seven. Keep reading. We'll continue to learn together and I'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day.